Section 1.3, Exact Linear Relationships. In this section, we're going to start looking at using straight lines to model real-life situations. So we're going to start off with the definition here, which is a linear model. A linear model is a non-vertical line that describes the relationship between two variables in an authentic situation. And just a note about our textbook here, the author, instead of referring to things as real-life problems, refers to them as authentic situations, so you'll see that quite a bit. And we are going to look at authentic situations in this section, but we're going to start off just getting some practice with linear models, so let's look at an example for that. Use the graph below to answer each of the, the questions that follow and they've shown us a linear model or a line here and they want to know what is the y value when x is negative 3. So the way you find that is you go on your x-axis and you count over 1, 2, 3 to get to the negative 3 side and then you move either straight up or straight down to hit your model. In this case that would be down. So we drop down until we hit that point and they want to know what is the y value. So then I would go across and see well how far down is that and it looks like that's two units down. So it looks like when x is negative 3, the y value is negative 2. And then just trying that one more time with a y value. Find the y value when x is 6. So we go on the x-axis over to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we would go up till we hit the graph. So there's the point we're talking about. And we'd want to know well, how high is that. And if you look across to the vertical axis you see your one unit up there so that implies that the y is equal to one when the x is six and next they want us to find something called the x-intercept and the y-intercept so the x-intercept is the ordered pair where our linear model intersects the x-axis so the x-intercept seems to be this point right here and if we were to label that that looks like that would be over 3 and up 0. So that would be our x-intercept, the ordered pair 3, 0. And that's really important. We always write our intercepts as ordered pairs. The y-intercept of our graph would be the spot where our linear model hits the y-axis, and that seems to be this point right here. And that point is over 0 and down 1. So we'd say it's 0, comma, negative 1 and that's the way we'd write our answer for the y-intercept. That concept of the x-intercept, the y-intercept, we're going to talk about that in a lot of our authentic situations, so let's go ahead and define those and have a graph here to look at for that. So an x-intercept of a line is the point where the line and the x-axis intersect each other, so that would be right here where we're crossing the x-axis and the y-coordinate of the x-intercept is always a zero. It's a little hard to see here, possibly, so I'll rewrite that again. It's a comma zero. But we have not gone up or down. We've gone over a, but up none, down none. So that's why I have a zero there for our y-coordinate. And then the y-intercept is the point where the line and the y-axis intersect. So that would be this one right here. And the x-coordinate of the y-intercept is always a 0. And again, I don't know if you can see that really well, so I'll rewrite it. It's a 0, comma, b. But we're not going over to the right or to the left. We're only going up b. So the x-coordinate is a 0, and then the y-coordinate is whatever this height is. And so for x-intercepts, we will always get a 0 for the y-value. And for y-intercepts, we'll always get a 0 for the x-value. Okay, we will now move on to a real-life application that uses linear modeling. Let B be the balance in dollars of a student's checking account at T months since the student opened the account. A linear model is shown below. So the line itself is what we consider to be the linear model, and then that's in the context of a set of horizontal and vertical axes. On the horizontal axis, we've got the variable T, which represents the number of months since the student opened the account. And on the vertical axis, we've got the number of dollars that's in the account. So let's look at the questions they have for us. The first one is, what was the balance three months after the student opened the account? So what we'd want to do there is three months is a time. 
So we want to go onto the time axis and find that 3. And just like we did with the x and the y graph on the previous page, we want to try and figure out what this ordered pair is. Since this graph doesn't have the grid lines that the other one did, I'm using a straight edge to help draw a little bit better lines of what's going on. And it appears that when t is 3, the balance in the account is about 1500. We could represent that as an ordered pair here if we wanted, 3, 1500. So what is the balance three months after the student opened the account? It appears that it would be $1,500. Then moving on to the second question. When was the balance $500? So this time, since they're giving us something on the vertical, they're giving us the Y coordinate. And we'll start off with the $500. And we'll draw a cross from there until we hit the graph. And then from there, draw down. And it looks like that would be after five months. So again, we could write an ordered pair there if we want. It's five months, and it's $500. And they gave us the $500 part, so the answer to the question for us would be that five. So when was the balance $500? That would be five months after the student opened the account. All right, let's see what else they have for us here. What is the B-intercept of the model, and what does it mean in this situation? So, according to what we did in previous work, the B-intercept should be the place where the model intersects the B-axis. So, which of these axes is the B-axis? Um, the B stood for the balance, and that's our vertical axis. So, this would be the B-intercept right here. And we have not moved over any time yet, so that would be a 0 for the input and a 3,000 for the output. So that would be the B-intercept just as an ordered pair. So we can write that down here. The B-intercept is 0, 3,000. But then it would be good in terms of helping to interpret what does it mean in this situation. It would be good to put units. So that would be 0 months and three thousand dollars. So just thinking then about what that means, this would zero months has gone by since they opened the account, so this means when they initially opened the account there was three thousand dollars in there. So when the student initially opened the account there was a balance of $3,000. And then the final question is, what is the t-intercept of the model, and what does that mean in this situation? So the t-intercept would be the place where our model intersects the t-axis, so that looks like this spot right here would be the t-intercept and that is over 6 and up 0. So just as an ordered pair, it looks like it's 6, 0, and then we'll think about the units and making an interpretation of that one as well. So let's drop down here. So it's 6, 0, and then that would be 6 months and 0 dollars. So this isn't our interpretation, but just adding the units allows us to start thinking about it uh, and try and come up with the wording that we want to use before we start writing our sentences. So zero dollars means that the student has run out of money, I suppose, and it looks like it took six months for that to happen. So six months after the student opened the account, their balance was zero or they were out of money.
I think it's uh, worth a little bit of time to look up at the model again and just talk about some of um, the realisticness of this. So we're claiming this to be an authentic model. Um, but one of the things that I would point out that seems a little strange here is that there's just this constant drain on this account. It's almost like the account has a leak and money is just dripping out of it steadily and after six months it's all gone. And that's not the way it's going to work with an account. You would go every now and then and uh, maybe go to the ATM and take some money out. Maybe um, you would put a check in every once in a while and the balance would go up. So it may be that you know somebody gave this person $3,000 and they're spending it on their bills and it takes about six months for it to be gone. But for it to just be constantly and steadily draining probably isn't realistic. We would have a drop when rent was due and a drop when they paid for their electric bills and so on. So this is a, a rough model of what's going on, but it's probably a little bit oversimplified.